This is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B version 1.2 that can be found inside your PC. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, Model B is one of the newest generations of Raspberry Pi. They actually have a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus uh, that has a, a additional functionality, but for our purposes this is going to, to suit us to be able to do all of our experiments. I wanted to cover some of the more important components associated with a single board computer um, prior to continuing on in this lesson. The first component that we care about is the CPU. This is a quad-core 1.2 gigahertz Broadcom 64-bit CPU. This is where the computer makes the decisions based on the programs that, that we tell it. So this CPU is, is very important in, uh, in making those decisions based on the input that we're providing it. The next item that we're concerned about is the SD card. So we installed a micro SD card. It happens to be a 16 gigabyte. Uh, you can get the Pi operating system on an 8 gigabyte uh, hard drive, but it uh, takes some a lot of the space and it doesn't leave us much room to be able to play around with. Most Raspberry Pis will support up to 32, although several users have uh, identified that they can uh, take on a 64-bit micro SD card. This card is going to um, contain all of our files. It also is running the operating system. There are only specific classes of cards that that'll work in there. I believe it's called a class 10 card. But if you get a, a you know a, a sand disk or a other reputable card, um, it should work fine. Down towards the bottom left corner, we find our power in. This is a micro USB power input. Um, it's made to handle about 2.5 amps. Uh, typically, if you if you have a um, phone charger or something similar to that to adapt to the other end of the USB, um, you should be fine. The one of the main differences between the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and the Model B Plus is they now offer what's known as PoE or Power Over Ethernet. So now you can just have an Ethernet cable plugged in and that gives you your internet capabilities, but then also it powers up the Raspberry Pi. For the most part, the Raspberry Pi doesn't consume a lot of, uh, or doesn't need a lot of energy, and so that's a really good feature that, that you wouldn't necessarily need um, a separate power. Just to the right of the power in is a full HDMI out. This allows us to connect the Raspberry Pi directly to a monitor that has HDMI. This is a big upgrade to the Raspberry Pi and allows uh, most users to be able to uh, um, utilize that. The Raspberry Pi does have other display outs over underneath uh, on top of where the micro SD card slot is. There was a DSI display port. It uses a ribbon to be able to connect to an LCD. That connection is nice if you're utilizing some type of an LCD touchscreen that's the size of the Pi and get a snap on top. But for the most part, uh, when we're experimenting with the Raspberry Pi, um, this HDMI port, and that's how yours is connected, uh, allows us to be able to, to view the operating system and, and manipulate uh, the computer. We're not going to spend too much time talking about these next two components. The first of them is the camera. This is a CSI camera port and allows me to do uh, just like a webcam uh, connection to um, my Raspberry Pi. It has some more capabilities as far as being able to control the camera. Um, you could actually connect a regular webcam uh, to the Raspberry Pi through USB, but that becomes a little bit more complicated and doesn't give us the flexibility. The next component that we're going to be uh, looking at is the audio output jack. This is actually a 3.5 millimeter composite video and audio um, that we would be um, outputting um, to a, a really low resolution um, screen. So 480, I think, is the maximum on composite. But uh, it's there, and there are probably certain applications where you didn't want to consume a lot of battery power. Um, that you would utilize that, but but I've never used it myself, so um, I can't speak to how, how good or quality it is. On the bottom right corner of the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, we find the Ethernet port, and this is a, similar to the one that you might find on your laptop or PC at home. This allows the Raspberry Pi to be able to communicate 
um, on the internet. So you may be thinking, you know, hey, I can get a Raspberry Pi and I can use it as a computer and I can browse the web for cat videos. Well, yes, but the, the real application for being able to connect to the internet is that there's a lot of data on the internet that aren't cat videos. There's data about the weather, there's data about um, temperatures and humidity and days of the week, and all this data we can now grab um, from from websites. Um, it's it's known as an API call. We can we can look at that website, get the data, and then use that data as some of the information that we want to uh, control the um, Raspberry Pi. So this is extremely uh, valuable component uh, that is on this single board computer. Um, they, there's also a Wi-Fi uh, capability uh, on the board. Um, when, when you have the option of using the Ethernet, it's always best, but uh, you could also then communicate uh, with Wi-Fi. On a vehicle, if I had a um, computer uh, that was could monitor um, you know traffic and and other things that were on the internet um, this would then also be a, a valuable add-on to that that module that's built in that's grabbing the information from the internet and then making decisions or displaying information to the driver so they get excited about um, being in the car right um, you may have heard uh, the term the Internet of Things or IOT. The Internet of Things is essentially non-traditional computers that are connected to the Internet and getting data. The Raspberry Pi is a, not the best example here because it really is a computer. However, um, a fridge that connects to the Ethernet or your washer and dryer that connects, those are things that are connecting to the Internet and, and the the industry for that is just getting more and more uh, significant. We find that in the, the automotive industry as well, that that uh, connection uh, to the data that's available is, is valuable for a vehicle uh, as much as it is for, uh, you know, a weather station. Right above the Ethernet port, we have uh, four USB ports. These are USB 2.0. Um, the current uh, model or current standard is USB 3.0, and that has a lot more to do with the uh, um, speed of transferring data. So these are perfectly sufficient for what we would uh, do to interact. The benefit of the USB port is, uh, you know, obviously now we can have peripherals that we can add to our Raspberry Pi. Um, so right now what we have connected to our Raspberry Pi is a USB um, dongle that is allowing us to use the mouse and keyboard with the operating system. We're also connecting and powering up the um, Android tablet that we're going to be utilizing as an oscilloscope. So very handy to have all of those ports. Um, that makes it so we don't have to have a USB port. There are many things and many technologies that are um, you know, found on a USB and, and we would want to be able to utilize that in this type of computer. The final item that we want to talk about is the GPIO. So this is a 40 pin extended GPIO, meaning that uh, we have these pins that are accessible to us. We're going to be connecting to these pins by way of a ribbon cable and that's connected to our breakout board. Um, we're going to do a completely separate video because we're going to utilize this uh, significant amount of, of the course. Um, I'm going to do a separate video to discuss what each of these uh, ports are and uh, what we're going to be uh, utilizing them for. So that's really the end of the um, overview of the Raspberry Pi. There's there's still more going on um, in this single board computer, but uh, for our purposes in the class, this is the, just kind of a brief overview of the components to keep you and help you understand and familiarize yourself with them. And uh, we'll continue on uh, utilizing this. Something that you should keep in mind as we're um, doing these electronic projects is this back-end computer that is operating and functioning very similar to a vehicle's uh, body control module or powertrain control module. It's, it's programmed to do, do something uh, when it receives uh, information.